In this video, I want to show how one can compute a delta value uh, given a function and some specified epsilon, or more specifically, uh, what domain of allowance is appropriate if we're given a specific function and a specific margin of error. So in this question, uh, we have provided the graph of a function f you can see over here, and we're asked to identify what number delta, what's sort of like the, the best choice of delta to guarantee that the absolute value of x minus one when it's less than delta will imply that x cubed minus five x plus six minus two, its absolute value is less than 0.2. So this, this package right here is pretty tightly bound. Let's try to unravel it a little bit. And so when it comes to these type of statements with epsilons and delta, I would recommend looking at the latter half first. What does this mean? So when we try to identify what's going on here, some things to mention. So we have this x cubed minus 5x plus 6 put in parentheses. This is indicating to us the function that's in play. This is our function f of x. Um, our function has some target value right here of 2. This right here is our L value. And this number on the right, less than 0.2, this is going to be our epsilon. Essentially, what we're looking for is something like the following. In general, these epsilon delta statements will have an expression of the form, the absolute value of f of x minus L is less than epsilon. And so just reading these things off, we get our function f is this cubic function, y equals x cubed minus 5x plus 6. L, which is our target value, is equal to 2. And our acceptable error is going to be 0.2. So let's analyze this in the diagram. Our function f was given right here. Again, it's this cubic function. Uh, we don't really know what's going on in the domain right now. We'll come back to that in a second. But let's look at what's going on in the range. So given our function L, we have this target value, L. This is the number we're trying to hit. And if we come along the function, we're going to hit L just about right here. Okay? Um, our epsilon value is set to be 0.2. So we're allowed to go 0.2 above or below our target. So 0.2 above 2 would be 2.2 and two, uh, 0.2 below 2 would be 1.2. So these numbers right here are gonna be L plus epsilon and L minus epsilon, we've computed those. And so with L minus epsilon, L plus epsilon, we then create the margin of error, which you can see in our diagram is right here. It's this strip, this, uh, this horizontal strip. As long as our point is inside of this strip, we're considered acceptable. This is in the margin of error. So what our task is, is how or what what domain what interval of x coordinates will guarantee that we're inside of this so then once we've once we've scrutinized the range now let's focus on the domain here if our function is x cubed minus 6x plus 1 and our target is l equals 2 what value should we aim with that is what number in the domain is going to hit l equals 2 so looking at the graph here if we come along y equals 2, we're going to hit the graph, and then we fall down here, and we're going to get our a value. Now, for this specific function, we can see that the appropriate a value is going to equal a equals, or is a equals 1. And one can actually see that if you evaluate the function at 1, f of 1 right here, you're going to end up with 1 cubed minus 5 plus 6. This ends up giving you 7 minus 5, which is equal to 2. So, x equals 1 is spot on going to give us y equals 2. So that's the perfect target right there. So all of this information is given to us because when we look over here, this absolute value of x minus 1 less than delta, that should be interpreted as the absolute value of x minus a is less than delta, for which this a value will be a specific number. But delta is the thing in question. That's what we have to figure out here. So again, summarizing in general, when you see this box of information, this will look like the absolute value of x minus a is less than delta. That implies, that guarantees the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. So if the distance between x and a is less than delta, that'll guarantee the distance between y and l is less than epsilon. So if we want to be epsilon close to L, we need to guarantee that X is delta close to A. That, that's our goal here. And so we have to figure out what is the specific A value. So we have all that stuff decided here. So to actually figure out what the delta value is, we need to figure out what these numbers are right here. So this blue strip you see on the graph, this would be our domain of allowance. We can go so far to the left of A and so far to the right of A. How far can we go? 
Well, if we want to figure out, say, this value right here, we have to figure out, well, who's the corresponding value above? So we come up to the function. One of these numbers is going to coincide with 2.2. Another one of these numbers will coincide with 1.8. Now, you'll notice in this situation that the point on the right actually corresponds to the lower bound in the margin of error. That's because our function's decreasing. Likewise, the left bound actually coincides with the larger uh, value in the margin of error because, again, our function's decreasing. If our function was increasing, we would see it the other way around, that the number on the left coincides with the smaller number and the number on the right coincides with the bigger number. All right, so we need to solve essentially we need to solve the equations playing around with this inequality right here we need to solve the equation when is f of x equal 1.8 uh, 1 and when does it equal 2.2 if we can figure that out we can figure out what those those x values are going to be so we're looking for these numbers we'll call them x1 and x2 so if we take the equation x cubed uh, minus 5x plus 6 this equals 1.8. Um, this, this equation, one could solve purely algebraically. It can be a little bit of a chore, though. Um, I'm not going to worry about the details of this. What I would recommend is using some type of graphing calculator or graphing technology of some kind. If you have a graphing calculator, you could solve this by graphing the function y equals x cubed minus 5x plus 6, and then graphing the line y equals 1.8. And then you could ask where do these two things intersect each other. Um, you could do this with Desmos.com. This is actually a free graphing calculator. Desmos.com there. D-E-S-M-O-S -S there. Um, if you go to the graphing calculator, you could then graph this function, graph this function. Then you could click a button to see exactly where they intersect. Um, another option that I think is actually one of the simplest is just go to the website www.wolframalpha.com. And then in the box, type in solve the following equation, and it will give you a solution. And we're going to need an approximate solution. X is approximately 1.124. So we're not, uh, the reason I'm pointing you to these graphing calculators is because of the purpose of this question. The, the point is not how does one solve or approximate this equation. This is just to help us to figure out what delta is. So assuming we can solve these equations, we would approximate this, we'd approximate the solution to f of x equals 1.8, that would give us approximately x is 1.124. If we do it again, but this time with f of x equals 2.2, if you solve that equation, you'll get approximately x is 0.911. So what we see right here is the lower bound is going to be 0.911. The upper bound is going to be 1.124. We got these answers using the graphing calculator, like I just mentioned here. Because again, I don't really want to worry about how did we get these answers, but we have to assume there's a little bit of error in these things, right? Because after all, these are approximations. These are not exact answers. So it could be that if you take x to be 1.124, you plug it into the function, is it going to be exactly equal to 1.8? Or could it be a little bit above 1.8 or a little bit below 1.8? Yikes. Um, and so because of that, we want to round these things a little bit uh, just to guarantee that it's safer because we can always shrink the domain of, of allowance because the idea is if you, if you have these goalposts that you have to be within, if you put them a little bit closer and you still get between the goalposts, that'll be guaranteed to be in the margin of error. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take these numbers right here and we're going to round them, but we're always going to round toward A. Always have to round toward A. What that means in this context here is if you take the number 1.124, right, if you round that to the, to the nearest 100th, that's going to give you that X2 is equal to 1.12, excuse me. So we round to the nearest 100th. No big deal. That rounds towards A. That, that is, we took a, a small step closer to A. On the other hand, if you take X1 here, if normally if you were to round this to like, say, two decimal places, you get 0.91, but that actually takes me a step away from a, so we're actually going to round this to 0.92. Again, getting us closer to A, uh, because if we take a step away from A, we actually might step outside of the domain of allowance, which we wouldn't want that. So then to calculate delta, what we need to do is we need to then take the difference between the X1 and X2 values, like how close are they to A. So we're going to take the absolute value of X1 minus A, and we're going to take the absolute value of X2 minus A, for which X1 
we see that's going to be 0.92 minus 1. Uh, for x2, we're going to get 1.12 minus 1. Uh, the second one is actually fairly straightforward. That's going to give you a 0.12 right here. The other one is also pretty easy, I should say. It's going to give you a 0.8. And so this is how far we are away from, from A. To the left, we are 0 0.08 steps away from A. On the right, we are 0.12. When deciding the delta value, we always choose the smaller of the options. So our delta value is going to be the smaller step. That is the minimum. We're going to take 0 0.08. And so that's what we have to choose for delta right here. If we come back up to our graph, and we examine it for just a moment, you'll notice that although this graph is not completely labeled, right, it is actually, for, it is computer with, generated with the computer. Um, so again, it's not perfectly to scale, but it is, it is pretty good here. You'll notice the point I'm trying to emphasize here. If you notice the left side of A versus the right side of A, it's skewed, right? A is not the midpoint of the domain of allowance. The smaller side is on the left, the bigger side is on the right. And so what we've essentially done um, we, we saw here that the distance on the left-hand side was 0 0.08, and the distance on the right-hand side was 0 0.12. So what we can do is we can always shave off a little bit on the bigger side. So if we were to shave off 0 0.04, we can then get a sector so it's the left-hand side is delta thick and the right-hand side is delta thick. And that's the goal. Can we find a single symmetric delta so that the left-hand side and the right-hand side, if we are no more than delta units away from A, will guarantee that we are epsilon, no more than epsilon units away from L. And so we do that by choosing the minimum, that is choosing the smaller of these two sides of A. Now it should be mentioned that our choice of delta, this 0 0.08, right? Uh, it's not a unique choice, right? This is essentially the largest choice of delta that we can guarantee uh, will get us inside the margin of error. But you could always choose a smaller delta that would also guarantee it. That's why we were able to round the way we did. That's why we were able to shave some things off. You can always choose it to be smaller and smaller and smaller. If you shrink the domain of allowance, that'll still keep you within the margin of error. It's when you lengthen the domain that things get into problems. For example, choosing a smaller delta will place the output within an acceptable margin of error. Thus, a smaller delta generally guarantees a more precise output. But on the other hand, a smaller delta may be more difficult to implement, right? If in this example, we didn't actually have any real life context to our function, but if we're, if we're shrinking, for example, delta to be like 10 to the negative 100th, Right, that would work. That that's much smaller than 0 0.08. But it might be impractical to expect um, people, computers, to have this level of precision. Um, and so we want to know who's the most generous choice of delta that'll guarantee that we fall within the margin of error.